Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at a huge kit again, our second master kit of this channel, which is the Buster Gundam. And yes, I know I haven't been uploading for a couple of months, I don't even know anymore at this point how many months it is. It's been probably like more than two months since I last uploaded, and I know it's been a long time, even more long, that I haven't reviewed a master kit kit. So I thought it was a perfect time, and I have to, when I have the time to review this, so... Yeah, we'll be taking a look at an old but gold kit. So yeah, this is the second Master Grade kit I have, and it coincidentally is another Seed Master Grade when we last time did the Strike Freedom, but now we're going to be doing the, what do you call it, the Buster Gundam from Gundam Seed. And yeah, I know some of you guys might want to look into the new Seed Freedom movie model kits, especially with the Rising Strike Freedom, not not, not the Rising Strike Freedom, the Rising Freedom, and also the Immortal Justice, but I've made the Rising Freedom before, but I didn't record it, so I might just review it as it is, and we might also take a look at the Immortal Justice, which I haven't built. So, yeah. Anyways, for future plans, we'll take a look about that later. I might review more of these old seed kits because I am really in love with some of the older ones. It's been some time that I really want to take a look into this kit, and this kit has gotten some reruns, uh, which is apparent from the, the box's cover, actually. I actually haven't taken a look into the box. I'm sorry, I just opened everything. It's been some time since I've uh, unboxed something. So, here is the box art cover, and if you look right here, there is a new Bandai Namco logo, and which has been used for around, I would say, like around the last two years. Where Bandai has used this new logo as to signify uh, not just a reprint, but like oh, the newer kits after a certain period of time. What what period of time it is, I might have to search it out first. But if I'm not mistaken, it was around two two years or so. So yeah, if you guys see this logo, it's mean that it has it's a new kit made in the 2020s ish. I guess you could say so. That's a cool thing that you could pay attention to. And here is the side displaying the fully painted kit with the artwork of the Buster. Right here, just like that. Here we have an artwork along with the price right here, but just ignore that. And then we have uh, some illustrations again here with the Gundam Seed, the old style model right here. And also the same thing again at the other side. So now we can actually take a look into this uh, manual. It has really nice artwork. I feel like it's very unique as opposed to some of the newer uh, C2.0 kits where it's just the, a black outline and then the artwork in the middle. This is a more zoomed out, sh uh, not zoomed out, zoomed in shot of the Buster and it's quite nice actually, I really like this design. So I hope they do more, more of these uh, unique, um, what do you call it, designs for the, for the manuals and here inside the manual you can see Several details, all in Japanese mostly because it's an older kit, so they haven't used much about much much English back then. So, yeah, you can see some of the other models that uh, is also in uh, the seed line. I really want to take a look into the Aegis next, but we'll have to see if I can finish this first on time. The video. So yeah, uh, honestly, for a master kit, this isn't too big. There's only quite a few runners here, so we can count this first. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and a polycap uh, runner last 13. So we have 13 runners here in total. So yeah, let's just get straight into opening these packs first, and hopefully nothing is missing from the runner. So let's just give a quick glance as usual. I think it's always the best practice to always check your models before opening them because once it's opened you can't get a refund and you might lose a piece or two so it's always best practice to check the runners so it seems like everything is all good so far there's a lot of pieces here for the main cannon and also several pieces here actually, i actually haven't seen the polycap i'm pretty sure the last runner was a polycap but oh it's right here it's in the, it's in the first pack so yeah we'll be taking a look into that soon so let's just Let's start to opening our first bag of runners. Honestly, I'm quite excited to make another Master Gate because it's been, it's been quite some time since I made my last Master Gate. I can't remember the last one. I think it might be the Zeta of Verka. It's been, it's been quite some time and don't you guys worry, I'm going to actually take a look into 
the new uh, C packs. So stay tuned for that. But I do not have the kit right now, so I do not know when that's gonna come out because, as usual, it takes time for us international Gunpla fans to get our hands on some kits. So yeah, we'll just have to be patient, I guess. So yeah, let's just get straight into putting this. And another thing that we haven't seen in a while is these Rabon transfer decals. Something also quite iconic for these uh, seed lights is the rub-on transfer decals, which we don't see that much of these days. But it's a really welcomed addition. I wish they did more with those. But yeah, it is what it is. They don't do much of it anymore. Even getting a water decal is already a blessing these days. So yeah. Let's just keep opening this. There's a lot of bags that I can't open with my hand, so it's going to take some time. But yeah, I really like the, the color of the Buster, which has a more peach color instead of white on the armor pieces. It's kind of cool, you don't see that often in a mobile suit. Especially in one of the lead mobile suits, so it's quite nice to have that in the seed roster. So yeah. Okay, I think that's all for the burners. Let me just get the plastic out of the way real quick and use this uh, the base of this box here just to place the runners at the side. So let's just put that down real quick. So let's just take a look at it from top to bottom in no particular order. So we have here is the F runner. I'm assuming these parts are for some parts of the legs and I can see some part of the waist here. Also some parts on the knees here, so which is really nice. This is in a... I'm pretty sure this is not the standard plastic, but... Yeah, this is labeled as the Seed X-Frame, which is uh, a shared mobile suit uh, frame for all the EGs, the main five Gundams of Gundam Seed. So that's quite nice. We have Runner L here in a similar color. Pretty sure the color is not catching that well on the camera, but you guys will see it better on the spin at the end. So that's runner L. Here is our first uh, seed X armor, uh, what do you call it? Runner here, and it's uh, in peach color. I'm not sure if it's peach. I'm, I'm just gonna call it peach right now because it's a bit brownish. Also says 2012 made in Japan. Here we have our first dark green uh, runner here. And runner C, it's mainly the parts for the feet. We'll see how, how much this snubs up. We can see it from the feet later, so we'll take a look at that in the review. We have Runner G again in this grayish uh, X uh, armor, X frame armor, but it's not labeled as X frame armor. It just says Buster Gundam. So I'm assuming this part's exclusively for the Buster Gundam. Here we also have another Buster Gundam. Uh, what do you call it? Runner here. His Runner H, also in the same grayish color. It's only bluish because of the light I have here. So yeah, ignore that. Yeah, I should move my other light here so it's a bit more yellow and a bit better. Here is Runner E with the X Seed frame. If I put it a bit close to my camera, it becomes a bit blue because my camera has a ring light and it's uh, white. So, yeah, here is E. Also in the same grayish color as the other frame. Here we have our D X Seed frame again. Also shared, another shared frame. And here we have our A frame, a multicolored frame. Uh, wait, not A frame, A runner. Here is the A runner which also has the clear parts here and also uh, the red and the peach colors. So that's quite nice. And we also got our antenna right there. Make sure not to break it because I broke something recently and I'm not gonna talk about it much. <laughs> so we have K here, which I think it's a bit darker than, than the frame. Yeah, it's a bit darker and it's parts for the cannon that we're gonna have. And we have runner AI right here, which is also in the peach color. And here we also have the last runner, Runner J, with most of our green parts. And lastly, we have our polycaps here. We haven't, I haven't seen this in a long time. Polycaps on the Master Gate kit. But I don't think it should be that much of a problem because the old seat frame is very good. So, yeah, that's that. That's our polycap joint here. And last but not least, we have our sticker sheet right here with some sticker decals and some rub ons right there with the Saf sticker and also some Omni stickers as well. So yeah, that's quite nice. And we also have the lenses here, I forget to mention. But yeah, I guess that's all for this uh, unboxing portion of the review. 
that is all right here and yeah i'm going to build this real quick you guys are gonna watch the time lapse as usual and yeah i will see you guys in the review portion of this video Is the Buster in its final form and in the turntable and I must say this looks absolutely amazing and the final build is actually really sturdy and actually before we start reviewing this model I did a mistake on the, the pose section that I usually do I actually flipped the the waist unit the other way around so yeah just just a, a, a bit of a PSA here uh, I did that accidentally, so don't mind the spin later on, but enough yapping, let's just take a look into this mobile suit, and I'm just gonna take this down first from the turntable and put the turntable away so we can take a look further on what's going on here. So yeah, let's just start with the accessories first, if I can just use my white lens for real quick. Here are all the accessories that we get from the set. So maybe I'm just gonna put this a bit behind here. So yeah, as you can see, we get quite not much stuff here besides the fingers here. So let's just take a look at the fingers first. So we got two holding hands uh, fingers here. So let me just zoom it a bit more. Right here, we got two hands for holding on to the rifle here, which actually I didn't use for posing. I just used the open widespread open hands. And maybe I should move the lights a bit closer here so you guys can see it a bit better. And so we got two trigger fingers that which I have no clue what the use is for. But I'm assuming this is from the other seed kits from the same era. You can use this with the Strikes Beam Rifle I'm assuming. And also most likely the Aegis as well. So it's nice to have the trigger fingers included as well. And the last uh, set of hands, actually it's not the last, the second last set of hands is the widespread open fingers and the one i have on the bus right now is the closed fist and here we also have the action base adapter for your action base needs and finally the pilot figure of diarca so yeah very cool I, I really want to try painting this but i do not have a brush small enough to paint this i think i might have to like look for a brush first and i do not know if i even have the skills to paint this but i'll try hopefully if i have the time and yeah, besides that, let's take a look at the Buster Gundam. So, the Buster Gundam actually lives up to its canon in-universe uh, stats, I guess, because it's meant to be a tanky and support uh, Gundam. And yeah, it is a very solid Gunpla, as you can see. Most Master Grades these days don't even have this level of sturdiness, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the plastic they use. I'm not too sure if it's ABS or something else, but pretty sure it's the, the ABS frame which makes this really strong and really good so yeah let's just take a look in the the articulation first so this backpack connection is quite interesting I hope you guys can see it if my camera would focus right here there is this backpack that is compatible with the striker packs if we can just detach this first let's just detach the backpack here so in the back here you can see hopefully I can move my light a bit more here Yep, right there. So you guys can see there is a polycap joint right here, which is compatible with, I'm pretty sure with most, most of the striker packs. So it is very much interchangeable. You can put the Buster's gun on the strike or maybe the dual if you want to, for whatever reason. So that's quite nice. And I think I have to get this out of the way first. Maybe we can start by popping the guns out first so we can see the, actually you not know, no, this, it's a bit too hard. So. Another point, oops, okay, let's just, maybe just, just open the side skirts first, so, yeah, that, that hand just popped off by its own, so let's just get that off the way first, so, yeah, maybe let's just discuss about the guns first, so as I was saying, the connect, this connection here, it's a ball joint connection, so it can do this, can swivel this much, and the ball joint, I would say, is quite difficult to pull apart, so 
That is why I pulled it from the side skirt here so we can also take a look at the articulation on each of the guns here. Mostly it's the same thing for both the cannons. I'm not pretty sure, I'm not sure what the name are. I will put it here somewhere. So yeah, this uh, this one, I'm not too sure what the name is, will be on the screen right here. And this gun, also this, I think it's more like a bazooka here. So yeah, the names of it will be edited in so you guys can see it. I will take a look into that articulation even more later and let's just take a look at the main unit first. So first of all, let's take a look at its head. Its head can tilt this much up, this much left and right. Quite free joint, you can do a full on 360 right here. Oops, this thing just fell off. Actually, while this thing fall off, let's just take a look here. Inside that piece, we have a huge sticker right here. And also the eye sticker as usual. And we also have the sticker at the back. I'm not too sure what it's labeled, but they use uh, Kanakana alphabets to label the stickers. So you know it's a very old kit. So that's that. It's a very nice wide range of motion. But yeah, I don't think it's double jointed like most, but yeah, but it's quite good. It's already quite nice. So that is for the head. As for the shoulders, you can pull this up quite high, only uh, obscured by the head here. So just be careful with uh, posing it because it, it can hit the head with the top part of this shoulder piece. And this shoulder piece can open to reveal the missile pods on its shoulders, which is really nice. Same goes for the other side, you can do that. And there is also a slight articulation with the wing binders, I guess, I don't know how you call this. At the side, it can go up and down, which is quite nice when you want to do some upwards posing here. Though it's still a bit conflicted with the arms, so make sure to pose it quite uh, correctly so it doesn't get in the way. As for the arm, it is a very strong boy, so you can do this. Really good range of motion here on the buster and I'm assuming most of the other seat master gate kits that use the same uh, what do you call it, frame so that's quite nice and here also does the same thing and as for the chest unit I don't think you can do much here that you can do to crouch it a bit forward and yeah there is not that much side to side movement but the ball joint on the waist uh, could help at least do some articulation there so that's quite nice and also, I did mention that this build was mostly with polycaps on the joints, but I have no issues yet with it, so it's quite nice so far. So, yeah, here is... Let's just take a look at the waist. Uh, let's just take a look at the articulation of the waist first. It can flip up like this. This is actually connected into, like, I would say, like a hinge here. And it's also connected to a ball joint in the middle of the waist section, like right around here. So that's quite nice, good range of motion there. And as for the back skirt, it's actually connected into one long pipe. I guess I don't know what you call it. One, it's like a pole where both of these uh, side flaps are connected to each other. So yeah, there is not much range of movements for the back, but you have a lot of freedom here in the front, which is a bit confusing, but it's all right. I can get away with that. So yeah, it's an old kit anyway. So yeah, I think that's that's completely fine I think you can also cut this in half, but I'm not too sure how it's gonna stay in place But yeah, maybe you guys can figure it out yourself It's possible to cut it, but it's not gonna stay in place. It's just gonna fall off. So yeah I'm not too sure how you can customize this, but yeah, so it's just stuck in one piece and yeah That's it for the side skirt right here and next for the foot Let's just open the side skirts right here. It can bend this far just like so it is a very good um, motion right there and this thing actually has a moving flap here which I'm not too sure which which part of the mobile suit it moves it I'm not too sure because it's just covered with this armor so I'm not 100% sure what you're gonna use that for but it just sticks in place really nicely there's a good knee separation right there so that's quite nice and as for the foot, you have a ball joint right here and a ball joint right there. So you got a good range of motion here on the ball joint. However, this thing likes to fall off the, the armor here at the knees. So just be careful, not the knees, this is the ankles actually. The ankles, so be careful with this part. It likes to fall off a bit, the connection is not too strong. So that's quite a bummer, but it's fine. And as for nut marks on this kit, 
surprisingly not that much apart from the green parts the green parts are nubbing quite a lot here if you guys can see so just be careful with the green parts you need extra effort for that and also the gray parts some of them like this is the biggest offender i would say if it would focus right here on the legs like right around here there is a nub mark which is quite prominent but besides that most of the gray parts actually don't nub up that much which is quite surprising and yeah i guess that's all the articulation you can see from this mobile suit so far and let's get into the cannons first and foremost so this cannon is connected through this c-clip right here which connects straight to the side of the mobile suit right here at the side skirts so if you take a look at the mobile suit right here it connects here with the c-clip and i must also say that you should also be careful when posing because I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm gonna try to zoom on it real quick. And maybe try to move the light a bit. So you can see there's a bit of a strain there on the side of it. The plastic is starting to go white, so just be careful with it. It's not that bad, but I think it could be big enough of a problem for it to be uh, like not functional at all. So just be careful with this uh, joint. And before I connect this again here, it's a bit hard to move. So this joint, can actually swing out like this but the first time you build it it's actually going to be like quite hard to move it out because it's the joint is like really hard so yeah just be careful to like just like take this off first and pose it as as you like first before like yeah before like working on it so it doesn't pressure too much on the side skirt right here just pay attention to that and yeah there is quite a big range of motion here that you can do there is a C-clip right here. There's a C-clip right here. So you got two movements right here. You got the first movement right here and the second movement up here, which is great. And then from there, you have a ball joint that connects from this piece into this piece. So a bit of a tilting motion here and there. So that's quite great. And same goes for the other side. So I don't really have to take a look into it again. And let's take it to look. Let's not take it to look. Let's just look at how this connects to the backpack i'm just gonna connect one of them first let's just put it here and let's connect the backpack just like so let's make sure to not do it the wrong way around there we go so in the backpack or rather on the backpack you got this piece right here this piece right here this is the connector point where the the arm here is going to connect so just swivel it into place and this part right here has a hole in it which is just gonna slot right in there if I can manage to slot it in if this shoulder piece would stay in place and we just put it in it's a bit hard to angle it there you go and this connects just like so and you can also put the other side again you do the same thing you pull this back you just aim it around here and it should go into place just like so and that's it for the backpack and as for the guns actually i forgot to mention it, this can extend or collapse depending on how you want it to be and depending on how it's going to connect to the guns so this gun can swing to the front no, it's not a gun, it's a cannon, I mean. You, you can swing it into the front and you can connect it to the back side of here or the other way around where you can connect this part, this end of the beam rifle or the beam cannon into this end of the beam bazooka or whatever it's called. And yeah, and you can combine it into one huge gun which you can see in the illustration which I hope I can put a picture of it up somewhere here and also you guys can see it later in the, when I'm starting to pose it. So yeah. I guess that's really all to it. There's not much else here that I can talk about. The accessories is just this, and we have the mobile suit right here, and we got some sample poses at the end as well. So yeah, the real question now is, do you wanna buy this? Because this is a ki an old kit, and it might be a bit tedious because some parts are quite difficult to put it together. So would you want to buy this? I would say 100% yes. I think this might actually be the best out of the bunch of the seed the first five uh, seed mobile suits in master grade format because at least from my experience it, it has been a blast making this but this i would say the strike was also really good and also the duo but i don't think it stacks up against this i really like the design 
I really like the mobile suit in general. I really like the character who pilots this. So overall, I really enjoyed this Buster Gundam, but we have to take a look into the Aegis as well, because that's the Aegis and the Blitz is the only last two kits that I actually haven't made. So yeah, I should take a look into that as well after finishing this Buster Gundam, which is amazing. And yeah, I guess that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry that I went on a hiatus for so long and I didn't post that much Gunpla content before the hiatus at all. So yeah, it's been some time and it's it's good to be back. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the spin as well. And I'm sorry that the waste was the other way around. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you, if you like my channel and if you want to watch more Gunpla content. And yeah, I guess that's all for this video. See you guys in the next video and enjoy the spin.